This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 44. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I'll give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword, and with the spear, and with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Ha'akwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Ha'akwadash, Barak Dum, to you, Zaquanium, Wa'akim, Wa'akwafium, you know, you elders, you brothers, you sisters, the whole for elect out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, giving diligence, make your call and election sure, and of course, keeping faith. In Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh Shai, in these last days, in these perilous times that we're living in. This is Brother Pashai, Ban Yashala. And this will be a quick lesson through the Spirit of Papi Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, going to how the Most High Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai deals with the underdogs. You see? And I'm going to the definition of, of um, underdog through the Spirit. And I pray this lesson could be, you know, a faith builder to the whole full elect. You know, especially you Akim out there, man. You know, you believers in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You see? Because the Lord deals with the underdogs. This is a beautiful underdog story. These Edomites, you know, these elites, you know, uh, these military, you know, generals, governors, these heathen nations, you know, they don't expect, you know, our people, you know, to rule next. You see, they don't expect the hopeful elect, the men that's out there in the highways and the bowies, teaching, preaching, prophesying. They don't see us as, you know, uh, um, um, men of the Lord, you know, they don't see us as the prophets. Until a house are breaking loose, then they're going to realize, and especially when they come down trying to grab us up, because the Lord going to lift up a standard. You know, the Lord deals with the underdog, man. We're just lowly, you know, we're prophesying in sackcloth. You see, that's what scriptures say to meet you on here at the earth, man. You know, the Lord got us in the spirit of, you know, being contrite, meek, humble, you know, because scriptures say what? Before honor is humility, and we're going through that humility stage right now. You see, this is how the, this is how the Lord deals. I'm going to get the count. It's like, this is how the Lord deals, and I'm going to get the count in Judges, the seventh chapter. You know, um, where the Lord told Gideon, you know, it's, I'm going to read it instead of quoting it. So let's read this definition of underdog. So it says right here, underdog, and it's a Google definition. It says, a competitor thought to have little chance of winning a fight or contest. You see? So going to the story I'm reading right now about King David and Goliath, the Philistine, right? The wicked ass Philistine. Uh, people looked around, they're looking like, 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 um, like Goliath said. He said, yo, you, you but a youth. You know, you got a fair countenance, you know, you young, you know what I'm saying? Am I a dog? You know what I'm saying? That you came with me with staffs? You see? He said, man, listen, I'm going to kill you, man. That's basically what you told David, I'm going to kill you. You know? And David told him, listen, you come to me with with, um, with swords, with shields, with spears. I come to you in the name of Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahshua, of host, the power of Israel, of the armies of Israel. You know? So the Philistines looking like, this this they warrior? You know, that's, and that shows how Saul was scared. You know, the men of Israel were scared of, um, of Goliath, man. They was terrified because Saul was the king, you know. He's supposed to be the one to go up there, man, you know. But David went, you see, because David, he feared Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. He had faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, confidence in his power, you know. And that's how we got to be in these last days when Esau rolled down upon us, man. We're those underdogs, man. We're those lowly shepherds, you know. We feeding the sheep, the lambs, the sheep, you see. And of course, we know um, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, he's the ultimate shepherd, man. You know, that's what scripture say, what? Feed my sheep, feed my lamb, feed my sheep. Also says what? Go to the lost um, tribes. So I go to the lost sheep by the house of Israel, man. Now that's Matthew the 10th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. You know? So this is um, like Revelation 11 chapter. The two witnesses prophesied in sackcloth. So we're the underdogs, man. They look at us like, uh, these men, they, they, they ain't, they ain't going to rule next, man. They in the ghettos, they in the slums. You know what I'm saying? We got Esau thing like this, man. We got grenades. We got tanks. We got flashbangs. You know, we got drones. You see, they got they got thermal fucking technology that could scope out, you know, from the from the from the sky and see where you're hiding that. And they got all type of technology, man. We don't have those things. We have faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the creator of the heavens and the earth, man. You know, and the Lord gonna lift up a standard for His elect in these last days. Let's read this definition. It says, underdog, a competitor thought to have little chance of winning a fight or contest. Then it says down here, a person who has little status in society. And that's us, man. We have little status in this wicked ass society, which we don't give a damn. You know, you know, Kevin Samuel talking about the high value men. He don't even know what it, who, who that truly is. That's the elect, you know, because this this society about to come um, collapsing. All right. So we have little status in this society. We're not well known here.
like a counterpart you saw like wicked jakes that sold out we're not well known you see which is a beautiful thing they they it's, it's gonna catch people off um off guard they're gonna be surprised the lord deals with what shock value you see <clears throat> let me get that shock value definition it says let me see wait <clears throat> Then we go back to the scripture, of course, through the spirit, right? Shock value is a potential of an image, text, action, or other form of communication, such as public execution, to provoke a reaction of sharp disgust, shock, anger, fear, similar to negative emotions. There's another um, definition I was looking for right here. Usefulness to surprise. You see? Usefulness to surprise and usually upset people. He uses offensive language for his shock value. So um, people can be surprised, man. When they see what the men of the Lord gonna be doing these last days, right? The Lord deals with the lowly, man. He don't need a whole bunch of numbers. He don't need a whole bunch of men. The Lord will get one man to chase a thousand. That's in the scriptures, man. Samson, right? So go back to this, the precept. I'm gonna try to read this whole story through through the spirit, right? So this time I'm gonna start up some, then jump down, right? Coming straight to the point. So first Samuel 17 verse one now, it says, now the Philistines gather together, their, uh, gather together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoko, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Shoko and uh, uh, Zika. And um, uh, it passed it on uh, um, Demin. I don't know how to pronounce that. Salaki, Ashala. Right? It seems like it says, um, oh, Pestamin, right? A Pestamin, I believe. Right? And it says, And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Eli, Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Right? Then it says, and the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. So they're getting ready to go to battle. And there was a valley, valley between, um, between them. And there went out, and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Goth, whose height was six cubits and a span, which they say is around like nine feet, nine feet six or nine inches. And it says, he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of his coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. This man was huge, man. You know, he was a warrior. He was, a, he was their champion. You see? He, he went to war. He had scars of his body, of his face. You know, he was strong. You know, he, he said what? His weight of his coat was just was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his, fear, of his spear was like weaver's beam. And his spear's head was weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. So he had he had the armor, man. You know, things was heavy, so you know he had to be strong. And he stood and cried unto the army to Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out, set your battle in array, and not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight me and to kill me, then will we be your servants but if i prevail against him and kill him then shall ye be our servants and serve us you see and the philistine said i defy the armies of israel this day give me a man that we may fight together when saul and all israel heard those words of the philistine they were dismayed and greatly afraid so saul was terrified and the men of israel was terrified all the israel was terrified man they were scared which shows what they lacked faith in yahweh Shai. now david was the son of the Ephratite, the fight of Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse, right? Which Jesse was um, from the tribe of Judah. And he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle was Eleb, the firstborn, the next Abinadab, and the third uh, Shammah. And David was the youngest. So David was the youngest. And the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. So David was what? A shepherd. He fed the sheep. You see? He looked, he, he took care of the sheep. And that's, and that's through the spirit. That's what we do today. And we are the sheep, man. That's being fed by the elders and apostles through the spirit. Probably about Shemel Shai. And we feed the sheep. You know what I'm saying? As well. You know, we all um, build. You know? So it's at verse 16. It says, And the Philistine drew near morning and even. And presented himself forty days, and Jesse said to unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and ten, and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and 
Look how thy brethren bear, so thy brethren fare and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went and as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his um, carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the, um, according to the same words. And David heard them. So now David is there. Now he's hearing what um, this Philistine said before because he, he repeated himself. Goliath repeated himself. He said it again. Now David heard him this time. Right, basically saying, bring some one man to fight against me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I believe it might um, say it again. But in any event, you know, he said, bring one man to fight against me. If he beat me, we'll serve y'all. If I beat him and kill him, y'all got to serve us. Right? So they and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel, he has come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. You see, so Saul be saying, yo, whoever kill this man, you're gonna be rich. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna give you my daughter and your father's house will be free in Israel, man. And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living power? David was in the spirit, man. And the people answered him after this man is saying, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And um, Elab, which is the eldest, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, to the men. And Elab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why camest thou down hither? So he got mad at his younger brother. He's like, why you came here, man? You're supposed to be taking care of the sheep. And with whom thou hast left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. So David said, all right, none of y'all want to do it. I'm going to go do it, man. Because David had faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for for thou art but a youth. He was a young man, and he and he a man of war from his youth. So Goliath was a warrior from his youth, man. You know, going to battles. You know, he probably was slaughtering people. You know, he probably had a reputation. He was, the, he was their champion, the Philistine's champion. You know, like I mentioned earlier, he probably had scars over his body and stuff. He was huge. You know, and you know, men back then was on a higher level, so it wasn't it wasn't no uh, unordinary thing for Goliath to be like nine feet. Right, because you got, you know, simpletons. But in any events, we on down, it says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. You see? So King David slew lions and bears, man. <laughs> you know, King David was a warrior from his youth as well. So King David was he basically was telling him, Unless you had nothing to worry about, you know? It says, thy servants through both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Seeing he have defied, watch this, seeing he have defied the armies of the living God, the living power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You see? So King David was in the spirit, like I keep mentioning. David said, moreover, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. So that the Lord delivered him um, from the lion and the bear, right? He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go and Yahweh Bashim Al Shabi with thee. So that man, Saul, man, man, you was you was you was scary, man. Saul was actually scared. He said, All right, David, go to me. The Lord be with you, man. Get do your thing. <laughs> you know, Saul was scared, man. And Saul and Saul armed David. Slocky, and Saul armed David with his armor. And he put an helmet of brass upon his head, and also he armed him with the coat of mail. And David girded his girded his sword upon his armor, and he was a seed to go. For he have not proved it, you know? So, you know, King David, you know, he was like, man, you know, I'm going to read it. So it says, and David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. He's, I don't know how to use this stuff, you know? And David put them off him. And he took his staff 
in his hand and chosen five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had even in the script, scribe, and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the, and the man that bare the shield went before him. Now watch this. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, and he, he disdained him. With um, He said, for he, sorry, let's read it again. Verse 42. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and a ruddy and of a fair countenance. See, man, he's young. He's handsome. You know, a fair countenance. What, man, what the heck? And the Philistine said unto David, am I a dog that thou comest to me with staffs? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I'll give thy flesh unto the fowl, to the air, and to the beast of the field. He said, Listen, if you come to me, I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to leave the scavenger birds to just pluck you up, man. You know, you're going to die. If you step to me, you're going to die. That's what he told David. You see, basically. And that's what Esau going to do in these last days, man. You're going to take the, the crime of the beast, you're going to get put to death. You know, if you don't get down with the, the NWO, you're going to get put to death. You know, Esau going to do this, man. Right, and it says what? Then said David to the Philistine. So this is the spirit that we gotta be in. We gotta remember this story. Then said David to the Philistine, "Thou comest to me with the sword, and with the spear, and with the shield, but I come to thee in the name of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahusha of hosts, the power of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied." You see, so we are gonna tell it to Esau, man, in the spirit, Lord willing, we're part of the number of the elect, right? Because the elect men gonna have the same faith, man, and I pray we're part of the number. When that time come, Esau gonna roll down upon us. I'm gonna get that in Isaiah 59, 19. The Lord gonna lift up a standard, man. The spirit of the Lord gonna gonna come mighty upon us, man. You know, we're gonna speak, we're not even gonna speak our own words. We're gonna speak um the Holy Spirit gonna be speaking through us, man. We're gonna be moved with the Holy Spirit. You know, y'all come to us with these guns, you know, these flash bangs, grenades, tanks, drones, you know, y'all come to us with all of this stuff. I'm coming to you in the name of Yahweh Shim Al Shai. And all they weapons are not gonna be able to harm us, man. We gotta have this faith. You see, the Lord, there was the underdogs, man. Those that, that don't seem like they're gonna win the battle. You know, they're gonna be 20, 30, 40, probably 50 deep. SWAT vans, helicopters over the place. Just for one man, just for one Israelite man, one, one elect man, when they come looking for us, man. You see? And that, and that one brother, man, gonna tear them apart. You know, the Lord said that. With thee, what, with thee, while I break in pieces the nations, man. You're gonna be my battle axe and weapons of war. The Lord gonna do some mighty things through his elect men in these last days. So we we got a lot to look forward to, man. We gotta get we gotta get excited, man. Then the Lord gonna send angels. So man, it's a whole bunch to look out for, man. Right? So it says, What? This day will the Lord, let's read verse 45 again. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield, but I come to thee in the name of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah host, the power of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, deliver thee into mine hand, right? And I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that, the, watch this, that all the earth may know that there is a God, a power in Israel, man. You see? Same, remind me the story with um, um, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, man. When Nebuchadnezzar set up that wicked ass image, that listen, if anyone hear these hear this music, you gotta bow down to this golden image. But Neb um, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego didn't bow down, you know. And then he basically told him, listen, who is this God that's gonna deliver you out of my hands, you know, out of that fiery furnace? And, he's, and they told him basically, they said, they said it's a one accord. Listen, even if the Lord, the Lord can surely deliver us, man. Yahweh Bashim El Shah could definitely deliver us. That's that's a light thing. But even, even if he don't, we're not going to bow down and worship the image. You see? Then when he, he he got mad, he turned up the fire seven times more completion. And the, the, he had the, his men throw him in there. And the men, it was so hot that the, it was so hot that the men that threw them in there, they got burned up. They died. But Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, the fire did not harm them. You know? And Yahweh Shah himself was sent down, man, to him. You know? And then after that, Nebuchadnezzar was like, yo... Yo, like he, that's when he knew, like, oh, snap, you know, whoever, their God, that's, that's, the, that's the God right there, man. That's the power right there, man. You see? So the scriptures say what? They shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rise of the sun. In these last days, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah alone will be magnified on this earth, man. You know? We're not going to be upping each other. Oh, look what I did. We're going to be like, call out Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Brak the Yahweh, Brak the Yahweh Shah. You know? We're going to be screaming in names, you know, to, 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 to the rooftops, man. 
and all these military troops, all these governors, the elites on down, all these people, the wicked Israelites, heathens, they all gonna know the name of the Lord, man. You know, his name will be known on this earth, man. You see, the whole earth gonna know that there's a power in Israel, man. He's dealing with the elect. That's what scripture say, what? Then shall it be known who am I chosen, man. You know, let's run down. Verse 47, and all this assembly shall know that Yahweh Bashim Shai saith not with sword and spear, for the battle is Yahweh Bashim Shai's, and he will give you into our hands. So King David knew the battle, the victory is already won. You know what I'm saying? The Lord, he controls everything. Who wins, who loses. So he can make it seem like, okay, the odds are stacked against us, but it's not. He already, he already um, 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 wrote down the victory for us, man. The elect already got the victory. You see, the battle is the Lord's. All right, so Esau, you're through. You know, whatever, you're, you're done. You're done. Verse 48. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistines. So David didn't back up. He didn't duck. He didn't try to, you know, run away. He ran towards Goliath, man, as Goliath was running towards him. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and sling it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth, right? So David prevailed over the Philistine with, his, with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw, and when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. You see, now we're gonna have the precept, right? That whole account is more on it, you know, basically. But that's the point I want to get out of that. Let's get Judges, the seventh chapter, and start verse one. Then Jerub, Jerub on Baal, which is who was Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Harad, so that the host of the Midianites, and it's during the time when Israel did evil on the side of the Lord, and the Lord delivered us to the hands of the Midian, Midianites for seven years. And basically, um, he rose up Gideon. Who was from the tribe of Manasseh, the so-called Cubans today. And Gideon was at least in his father's house. Let's get that account right fast. So to see how the Lord did with the underdogs, Judges 6 and verse hmm, right here, 11. And there came an angel of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim al Shai, sat under an oak, which was an Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the um, Abazarite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord, Yahweh, is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then all is all this befallen us? You see, it may seem like, oh man, like, why is all this happening to us, man, if the Lord is with us? You see, but the Lord, he never forsakes those that trust in him. Let's read on down. And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not Yahweh, Shai bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us, and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. Now, that's that. the Lord did that because we was, we, was, we was acting up, man. We was doing evil in his sight, man. That's why the Lord did that, right? But let's, let's read on down. And Yahweh Bashim shall looked upon him and said, Go, and this is thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And Yahweh Bashim al said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. You see? So the Lord raised up Gideon during his time. So we'll go back to the seventh chapter, Judges 7 and verse 1. Then, because he um the, he got the name um Jerubbaal because he destroyed the um the altar of Baal. You see? Who was um, which was his father was into that, you know? Then it says, Then Jerubba Jerubbaal, who was Gideon. And all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Harad, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Marai, 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 Slakia, in the valley. And Yahweh Bashim al Shah said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give to the Midianites into their hands. He says, Too many. He said, Yeah, I came too deep, right? Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand have saved me. He said, It's too many of y'all, man. Yeah, I came too deep. Cause you know he said he knows he knows his people, man. They can be like, man, look what we did, you know. So look at all of us. He said you don't need that much people, man. The Lord deals with the underdogs, man. He deals with the lowly. He don't he don't he don't need that many people, man. He need a fewer number. That's one hundred forty-four thousand is what I believe zero point zero one percent of the whole world's population. <laughs> you know, one hundred forty-four thousand. The hunters, man. 
the 144,000. Now watch this. Uh, so it says, and the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give to the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, my own hand have saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return to depart early from Mount Gilead. So if you're afraid, man, you're scared, get up out of here. And the return of the people, 20 and 2,000, 22,000 left. And there remained 10,000. That's all 10,000. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people, oh, and it's, it's lucky. Let's read on down. You all spoke too soon. And the return of the people, 20 and 2,000, and there remained 10,000. And Yahweh Bashim Yahushua said to Gideon, the people are yet too many, still too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I'll try them for, um, for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And, whom, and whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go with thee. So he brought down the people into the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. Um, let's jump down, right? Verse 7. I have to read verse 6, lock it. And the number of them that lapped, put in their hand to their mouth, were 3,000 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the three hundred men, so like, and the Lord said unto Gideon, by the three hundred men that lapped, will I will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. See, three hundred men, from twenty-two thousand to three hundred men. You see, to the Lord, the Lord, He gets the the honor, the praise, the glory. You know, He, um, the, the battle, the battle is the Lord's, man. You see, He gets the um the praise, man. And let all the other people go, every man into his house. So that's the point I want to get on that. All right, so the, eventually, you know, you know, um, reading down the story, the Lord delivered us, man, from the meeting nights. And, you know, and um, Gideon, he saved Israel during that time. You know, the Lord was up Gideon. All right, so we have nothing to be afraid of in these last days. Look at Isaiah 59, right? I'm going to close out with this one. Isaiah 59, 19. Let's start at verse 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vintage for clothing and was clad with a zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay. Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim al Shai shall lift up a standard against him. You know, so this time is coming, man. When Esau wrote down that great wrath, the Lord said, I'm going to lift up a standard against this devil, man. I got you. And none of his um, weapons, let's read this, Isaiah 54, verse 17, right? No weapon that is formed against he shall prosper, you know? So we're going to tell him, man. We're going to be in the same spirit King David was in. You know, you come to us with your swords, your spears, and your your um your shields. You come to us with your, your AK-47s, your AR-15s, your Glock 9s, your flashbangs, grenades, you know, your your battle, um basically your armor. You got your bulletproof vest on. You got your helmet, <laughs> you know, you got your boots, you got your drones, you got your tanks, you got your nukes. Got, you know, Esau got all these things, man. All these, all this technology, right? But the scripture say what Isaiah fifty four and seventeen: No weapon that is formed against he shall prosper. That's none that's gonna prosper. We're gonna say we come in the name of Yahweh Shimon Shai. And it says what? In every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh Shimon Shai, and their righteousness is of me, save Yahweh Shimon Shai. You know. Another priest I thought about is Jeremiah fifty one. Let's jump down in verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the form of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts it is, is his name, Yahweh Bashim al of hosts of armies is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms, and with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. So if they're fighter jets, you know, everything, man. Anything you could picture, Esau's military, we're gonna destroy all of that shit through the spirit of Papiha Bashim Yao Shai. You know? So the odds, the odds may look like it's stacked against us, but it's not, man. The the victory is already written. The battle was of Yahweh Bashim Yao Shai's. Verse 22. With thee also will I bring in pieces man and woman. And with thee will I bring in pieces old and young. And with thee will I bring in pieces the young man and the maid. I also I will also bring in pieces with thee, the shepherd and his flock. 
And with thee, I'll break in pieces the husbandmen and the yoke of his oxen. And with thee, I'll break in pieces captains and rulers. And I'll run unto Babylon and into the, all the inhabitants of Chaldea, all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, save Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. You see? So the Lord is raising up what? The 144,000 mighty men. You know, and they're going to get busy. And Lord willing, part of the number, man. You know, that's what we fighting for. And I pray the same for you brothers out there, man. You know, that, that's sincere. Zechariah 12 and 8. And that day what shall Yahweh Bashim Shah defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. We enjoy the story with David, man. And it's more accounts with King David, man. Psalms the 18th chapter goes out. King David was bending still with, with, his, with his fucking arm, man. You know, King David has spiritual powers. You know, another count, basically, the Lord sent an uh, uh, angel to deliver David as well. You know? So it says, um, he that is feeble, the most weakest brother, among them at that day shall be as David. And, and the house of David shall be as God, Allah high powers, many most highs, as the angel of the Lord before them, man. So brothers going to have them spiritual powers, man. The underdogs, the Lord going to raise us up, man. You know, people least expect it. I want to get like two more in Salaki, probably one more. Right? Let's get Zechariah. I believe it's 13 and 9. No, no, no. That's not, this is not what I want. It's Zephaniah 3 and 19. Right? Zephaniah 3 and 19. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out. So speaking about the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. And I'll get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in a time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith Yahweh Bashim al Shai. You see, this, this deliverance is going to be far greater than the time he delivered us during the time of ancient Egypt. Jeremiah 16 chapter is going to prove that as well. Jeremiah 16 to 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Bashim al Shai, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh Bashim al Shai lived, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yahweh Bashim al Shalif that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whether he have driven them. And I will bring them again into their land and I, that I gave them to their fathers. Fathers, Slakir. Behold, I will send for many fishers, save Yahweh Bashim al Shai, and they shall fish them. Right now, that's what we're doing right now. We're fishing. You see? We're fishing right now for the elect. Once the elect is sealed, that's a wrap. You know, for Esau's kingdom. His kingdom is coming down. And Jacob's beginning to that follow with, man. When our Lord come back, Yahweh Shai. Right? And after will I send for many hunters, right? The hunters. And they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. You see? So the Lord going to send forth them hunters, man. And scripture is also going to how one man of you shall chase a thousand. Let's, let's end it off with that one. And Joshua. Joshua, I believe, is 13. No, it's not Joshua 13. It's Joshua 24. No, no, no. It's, no, I'm sloppy. I'm in the wrong one. Let me see. Yeah, Joshua 24 and verse. Slack, let me just type it in. No, Slack, I know exactly where it's at. Slack, it's Dwadi Al Bashim Al Shah. Right? Oh, it wasn't there neither. Slack, yeah. Oh, I gotta get it. Still, Kohalan Lai Al Bashim Al Shah. Right, get like one more. And I pray this is edifying a faith builder to the whole for elect, man. The Lord is he's dealing with the underdogs, man. So let them all think we're gonna lose. Nah, man. We're gonna get the victory. Joshua 23 and 10. That's the scripture. Right? We're gonna get the victory, man. We gotta keep enduring and have faith in Yahweh Bashim Shai. Joshua 23 and verse 8. Joshua 23 and verse 8. But cleave unto Yahweh Bashim Shai, your power, as he have done unto this day. For Yahweh Bashim al Shah have driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man have been able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For Yahweh Bashim al Shah, your power, he it is that fighter for you, as he have promised you. Take it heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love Yahweh Bashim al Shah, your God, your power, man. We gotta love Yahweh Bashim al Shah, keep his commandments endure. The Lord said, listen, one man of you gonna chase a thousand, man. So we got none to fear. You see, the eyes may look like it's stacked against us. We our backs are against the wall. Esau rolling down, but we just gotta pray to Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. He, he gonna put that spirit upon us, man. Right. So I pray to Yahweh through the spirit and probably Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. I wanna give Kohalim La Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Chakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. 
peace and silence. Taste to the left, scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Without him to say, Shalom, while Baba Ball. Shalom.